Hi, this is Margaret from dataminingdna.com and this video is about using software programs to validate your JEDCOM file. If you're having trouble importing a JEDCOM file into a online family tree site or into a piece of software and it's failing, what can you do about it? Or how can you go about investigating it? I'm taking a look at the JEDCOM org website, the official home for the JEDCOM specification. And it actually has a page of validators. They're listing what four. This one is no longer being maintained. And then this one is no longer being maintained. So that leaves us with this, a free online JEDCOM validator. And if it's supporting 5.5.5, then it must be up to date. And then we've got Quanoplex. So what I thought is I'd give both of them a whirl. The first one I'll take a quick look at is this online validator. But, oh, they don't have a link. <laughs> That's actually in blue, but it's not a link. Jed, is that a link? Okay, so they list them, but they don't link to it. So I'll just give Jed in line a search. Here we go. Okay, so this is it. I'll put a link in the description below. Now, the first thing I will say is because this is online and you're submitting a file, just be aware of what is actually in your JEDCOM file. And I wouldn't be particularly rushing to to submit a JEDCOM file with living people to an online site that I'm not familiar with. What is it saying it's doing? It says, your privacy is respected. No files are stored, they're validated and discarded. That's fine. But kind of like um, maybe an about page or privacy in terms of conditions. But I'll give it a limited try out. So if I choose file. And this validate.jed, it's a file that I prepared using Roots Magic that did not have living people. I choose the file and then I click submit. Okay. So here is what I'm seeing in terms of invalid content. And it's giving me the line numbers. Tag resi has a non-empty content. It's grandson. These are the line numbers. So if you actually want to go and investigate any of these, you need to just open the file. I'm going to use Notepad++, not Notepad, because it has line numbers on the side. Here's the file. So I'm just going to open it in Notepad++. Here are the line numbers down the side, and all oh, these ones it doesn't like, 148. I think this might be an Ancestry thing. Is Ancestry putting these relationships? Yeah, I can see why it shouldn't be in a, a residential tag. So let me try the desktop software. So desktop software is from Chronoplex. And it's my family tree I was more familiar with. But what I'm looking for is, here we go, the JEDCOM validator. So I've already, I downloaded it and downloaded a .exe and, and install. And I installed it on, I'm on Windows 10. Is it available for the Mac? Not available for the Mac. So you would need to run it on an emulator if you want to try it on the Mac. I've installed it, so I'm just going to open it to run it. Okay, so this is the JEDCOM validator. I've had a little bit of a noodle around. So basically, in terms of your validation modes, you can validate for best practice if you validate for standards only. I'm not going to validate for best practice because I already know that Ancestry may not follow best practice all the time. I do want to validate it for the standards because I just want to make sure that if I export a JEDCOM from Ancestry, I'd like to know that it will import elsewhere. I'm going to set this to standards only and then I'm going to go looking for my file. I'll use the little file that I exported from Roots Magic that I actually also looked at in the online application. So I'll go with this tiny little file. Well, it's certainly finding less issues. So is it Ah, okay, right. I just right-clicked, and I'm actually telling JEDCOM Validator, because I have a tick here, to show fewer duplicates. Got it? I'm going to take that tick off. <laughs> okay, so I was doing, yeah, I was doing both files as a disservice. I was hiding similar warnings. So with the JEDCOM Validator, there's its first warning about this, re the residence event has a line value, and line 74 here, it's actually saying it has a line value and it's actually telling me what's in the line that it doesn't like. And then the online software is also finding the same problem on different lines. Whereas JetCom might have hidden that once I took off the duplicate, high duplicates or whatever it was, it's actually showing me I scroll down. Yeah. So there's another residence problem. There's another residence problem. If I now 
right click that I right click and show fewer duplicates am I telling it to show fewer duplicates just duplicates of that line or is it show fewer duplicates in the end of all of them show fewer duplicates yeah that's a little slightly misleading in terms of your visual cues okay here I'm just running my cursor running the mouse wheel over here and I just happen to have a line highlighted when I right clicked but it actually I'm here in white space right click so the show fewer duplicates isn't specific to a type of warning if you're actually got anything highlighted it's actually to the entire file I like this though I must say I do because what this is telling me is that let's say I've, I've decided well actually I don't mind these residential problems if I say hide this type of issue and it goes away and now I take off to show fewer duplicates it's a nice way of getting rid of the clutter on the screen so suppose I say I, well, I don't know what this means so I'm gonna hide it now I'm down to the length of the multimedia reference is down to 30 characters so one of the things about the desktop software is but I couldn't quite work it out if you right click just right click over here it says go to issue and text editor I thought well, that's really nice okay bring me to this issue and maybe highlight the issue in big red but it doesn't what it does if you I right click it opens it in notepad unfortunately with notepad I mean the line is here it's not going to jump to the issue in notepad now I had a little dig around what's going on there and if you go to the options I'm up here settings go to options if you set the text the text editor is set to notepad and what it's, it's inviting you to do is set your own text editor here like I could try setting this to notepad plus plus and then figure out the command line syntax to put in here that it would actually jump to the line and scroll down to the line I had to play around and I couldn't quite get it to work so that is not as handy as it might be what I want to do is I do want to put the uh, the desktop software through its paces on a on my big ancestry tree let's go take a look at it with a big tree so open file picker so this is my big tree it's not massive compared to others but it's what I've got so the nice thing about this validator the desktop software from chronoplex is that if we go to severity there's warnings recommendations information right so let me say that I just want to focus on the errors first so this file actually has big red X errors the UTF-8 encoding I'm not gonna worry too much about that simply because other family tree programs will accept it well certainly Roots Magic has my heritage has and Jenny has so I haven't had a problem I don't mind about this this one I was curious about invalid user defined tag UID why is it invalid like and what, it, what what am I looking at here so if I go to issue and text editor yeah see it just starts me at the top okay so 4355 edit go to 4355 okay and it's jumped me down to this so we've got a name tag and then underneath name tag we have UID and we have what looks to me like it's like a good it's a unique identifier of some kind the error code is 801 which is the JEDCOM error code so when I right click on the line and go to this menu item show error help I'll click on that it's jumped me to this page if I'm on the chronoplex site this is the error tag and I can see the errors are here on the right and what it's telling me is that a user defined tag is not prefixed with an underscore right so what's going on here is that this UID is not part of the JEDCOM as a tag is not part of the JEDCOM standard software programs can create their own tags that can be passed around but if they're going to create their own tags they have to prefix them with an underscore suppose I was trying to upload this particular JEDCOM to online software like Jenny or what have you and it was saying oh the whole thing's failing can't deal with this at all if the problem was this UID I would simply edit this file manually and I would take out that line so that is the big red X so that's me looking at the errors now let me look at the warnings quite a lot of warnings and this is where it kind of got interesting so let me take a look at these warnings and let me just jump down here and it's telling me that these aren't valid date values 
it would be nice if I could say hide all the other types of issues and show me all these ones and then I can just work through them one by one. What we need to do is I need to look for line one, two, three in here. So edit go to one, two, three. Oh, I can see and I can see what's going on here. So this is coming in from the from the census. So it's not it's not me. I didn't type in <laughs> that date. So this is all relating to Patrick Smith. Okay, let me go and take a look at Ancestry. So the census records, Patrick is in the census records, and I pulled in the census records as sources within Ancestry. And Ancestry generated this record, and Ancestry pulled in the date as was on the actual record itself. And the record itself had spelled it out. So <laughs> it wasn't me typing it. Can I change that? I probably can. If I edit, I'm just going to edit. Yeah, I can change that to MAR, but no, I am not going to go through all these ancestry generated dates. And to be fair, I'm ancestry aren't have generated the fact record as of type residence, but it's I think it's just pulling the information verbatim that's on the census, and it's not changing it from it's not transforming it from March to MAR, which I think if it did, people would be up in arms. So that's fair enough. In that case, if they're all residents, then I'm not too bothered about that. But I saw something else, something else caught my eye. Yeah, about 1877. ABT dot 1877 is not a valid date value. Okay. And I think, um, is that actually on? Yeah, and that's, I did type that in. Where's my experimental tree? I come to quick edit here. Watch what happens if I type in a b about 1877. I've typed in about. Look what Ancestry is suggesting. It's suggesting it wants capital A B T dot. I'll just type in circa 1877. It says hey circa. Well actually we kind of know what that is but we prefer to have A B T dot. <laughs> and I just take I take the suggestions. You don't have to. You can you can type in anything you want here, and you can hit save, and it will go in as text. It's a free text. It doesn't stop you from entering. So that's what Ancestry wanted, and it does not surprise me in the slightest that what Ancestry wants isn't JEDCOM standard. <laughs> so the decision I have now is that given that this is not the JEDCOM standard, this ABT dot, do I go into every person? where I've used that format in my ancestry tree and change it to whatever is the JECOM standard. And it, it's, it's certainly it's a valid thing to do, but I'm not going to because every other genealogy software program, be it online in terms of me uploading a JECOM to my heritage, or be it offline, let's say using Roots Magic or my heritage's software, which is Family Tree Builder, they've been perfectly happy to import a JEDCOM with dates in that format, and indeed dates in this format. So personally, I don't feel compelled to go and change anything here. So I've investigated, I've decided on my course of action, which in this case is nothing, and I am going to hide this type of issue, so as I can see what is left. So I'm going to take one more example, because it's representative of most of the rest of the warnings here. It's giving out about a marriage event, and it's giving me a line number of 11595. So right click, this doesn't actually happen, go to issue and text editor, but I will jump to 11595 to see who this is. So the problem here is, who is this person that this event is related to? Because you're down here in the weeds where we've got all these related attributes. I just want to show you how to work your way back up to the, see the person's name. So once you have their name, you can go and look for them in your, in your tree. So this is a marriage event. So I need to go back up after all these child records. This is describing the family relationships. I need to find record zero, the first record zero as you go work your way up. So this is describing the family relationships of an ID, family 23. I now want to find the person's IDs. So if I take the wife's ID, it's P98, right? I'm going to copy P98, Control C that. I'm going to go to Edit, Find, and now I want to search upwards, P98. 
and see how it's gone. It's jumped up near the top of this text file to P98, which is describing it, that, that row is row zero, describing an individual, not a family. And here is the person's name. And that's who I'm looking for. So, right. So, here is Anne Gillis in my tree. Here is the marriage event. Just click edit. If I just go to the media page, I uploaded an image of a marriage record. And then for the fact details, I gave it the date. I typed in the date. I gave it a location. And I filled in the, in the description field. What the... Ancestry export of the JEDCOM has done is it's created this marriage event and then it's copied what I typed in the description, source from marriage record in Roots Ireland. It's just appended that to the tag. It's nothing to do with me per se. That's what Ancestry has done when it exported the JEDCOM and the JEDCOM validator is saying that's not valid. And I don't think it likes the fact that the text was just appended to the marriage tag. I'm curious now, I suppose, my next piece of investigation is, did I lose data? So when I uploaded this particular JEDCOM to my heritage, did I lose this information? I'll make a note to myself to investigate that in due time. Okay. I am more than happy to say that, just in terms of the user experience, this Chronoplex JEDCOM validator is a nice piece of kit. And the online validator also seems to do the job but it was very limited in my testing because I just wasn't prepared to put my full family tree up onto this online site. We've got a companion article on our blog which covers the review of the two different validation tools. I'll put a link in the description below to the blog article which also has all the links to getting the software. And I just want to point out that down at the bottom we've got a section. If you found our video or find our article because you're having trouble uploading a JEDCOM to a your target platform. You may want to take a look at a couple of our other articles and tutorials. We have an article on uploading to MyHeritage and some common problems. We have an article of uploading a JEDCOM to Jenny and some various pitfalls that you can avoid and an article on uploading a JEDCOM to Ancestry. Those links are down at the end of the companion article to this particular review. Hope that helps. Please like and subscribe and best of luck with your family research.